Something that's been bugging me. I've been taught that oil is lighter than Freon refrigerant. Therefore, it's supposed to rest on top of it. Yet, on a flooded heat exchanger, train takes the oil back from the very bottom. Okay. So, yes, oil is lighter than refrigerant. Uh, so, 130 oil, most oils that we use for our compressors have a specific gravity of somewhere between 0.8 to 0 0.9, 0 0.98, somewhere in there. Lighter than water. So, that's why your oil rests on top of water. So if you get water in a circuit, or if, if you broke the three out, you would actually have your oil on top, any liquid water would be in the middle, and your refrigerants, most refrigerants would be underneath. I actually did find that R32, in some research recently, is uh, has a lower specific gravity than water. So water would actually sink to the bottom of R32. Uh, and depending on the type of oil being used with R32, it could they could either blend or the oil would still be on top, which most of the time the oil is probably going to be on top still. But with 134, which RTWD I see, uh, those are going to be 134 machines. 134 has a specific gravity of 1.22. It is heavier than or denser than water, and it or not water, oil, and it will sit below it. Now, what train is doing is most of those are, or not most, those are um, falling film evaporators. Being the fact that they're falling film, the amount of refrigerant in there is very limited. There's just a small level of refrigerant in the bottom. And this is one where one way where these are, I would consider more true falling film versus the falling film we think of with a YK. And that's one reason why I call a YK, a hybrid falling film evaporator, because a YK is intentionally holding a substantial amount of liquid in the bottom of it to cover a set of tubes, uh, where in the, in the top set of tubes is the falling film portion, and then we have a flooded portion in the bottom, and it's, it's intentional that way. Where most like actual traditional falling film, there is very little to... I'll just say it's very, very little actual liquid standing in the bottom of the heat exchanger. You see this with a YVAA. YVAAs with York also pull off the bottom of their evaporators. Why? They're a falling film. These RT uh, series water cooled by train, RTHD, RTWD, these are uh, falling film evaporators. So they have a very small amount of liquid actually standing in the bottom of them because that liquid level is so low and there's is so minor that these eductor systems or which you know whether it be a gas pump or whether it be an actual like jet pump eductor these oil recovery systems can pull off of the bottom of the evaporator because like in the refrigerant the first few inches of that liquid refrigerant is going to be the, where the turbulence is and the, where the oil and refrigerant are going to be heavily mixed and latent because the oil is going to sit on top, but it's still like boiling is happening. Stuff's happening here. So they're still going to be mixed in together. It's not going to be like a if everything was standing still and stagnant, then they would properly separate. But that's not true while the machine is running because everything's boiling and like that process is still happening. So um, because of that, basically the majority of that low level refrigerant is actually um is actually getting that heavy oil latency to where the recover the oil recovery system can draw that in and it's still being effective now if it was a true flooded a true flooded then all of our tubes would be fully submerged well that that system would have to be further up and let we see that with you know say a CVH or a YK, proper flooded designs, those eductor lines come off of the midpoint of the evaporator or right above or right about where the top of the tubes are, maybe just slightly below it. That's where those eductor lines come off. But those are holding, you know, a, a few, or a couple of feet worth of liquid refrigerant in them. And we've got to get higher up to get to the top of that. Even the YK with a falling film, you know, hybrid falling film designs, those pull higher up on the evaporator because we have 
uh, you know, we still have over a foot in most of those cases on the smaller machines of liquid refrigerant and standing in there, but we don't have that with these other falling film designs. They're, they're all more traditional falling film where there's just mere inches of, of liquid standing in that evaporator, which is all that we need in order to capture that oil latent refrigerant. Because again, there's going to be several inches of that oil getting stirred into the top of the refrigerant level, uh, the liquid refrigerant, uh, which is all like that, that is the whole process. We're just trying to get that oil latent refrigerant into our recovery system so that we can then process that oil back into the part of the system that we want it to be in. So yes, that is still true. Oil sits on top of refrigerant, but because of the evaporator design, that's why it makes sense to pull off the bottom of the evaporator um, because that's where the old latent refrigerant is. Without like just deep diving into this kind of stuff, those can be real tricky to process through in your head because that just doesn't make sense because I was that way at one time. I, I remember looking at this and like, you know, they say this, but they did that. Like it, it's something like intuitively, like I'm thinking, okay, uh, intuitively that would mean oils on the bottom and I've got like something just, this ain't adding up here. So, uh, to, to add to that. So like R123, again, water is a gravity of one. 123 would be 1.47, uh, 134 is a 1.22, R32 is a 0.98, it's interesting, uh, 513 is a 1.17, so it's just slightly uh, heavier than water, and interestingly, I could not find, after a decent amount of time looking, a specific gravity for 514. Um, I did find the moles scale uh, or the moles weight which is uh, the you know the molar mass which then we're getting into molecular like weights and periodic table structure stuff like that so but just because the molar mass is heavier than uh, water doesn't mean that it's actually more dense and that it would actually uh, sink below it because technically R32 has a heavier molar mass molecularly than water does. I think water is, um, what, 18 uh, grams centimeters cubed, something like that. And 32, I think, is like 50 something. But yet 32 has still has a lower specific gravity than water, even though molecularly it is technically heavier. I'm, if you're not a nerd in this stuff, I'm... I'm uh, way off into the weeds here but for those of you who are and appreciate this i uh i appreciate you anyway i could not find what 514 was reference material that they give us most of these others they'll actually give us the specific gravity but for some reason they don't give us that for 514 not really sure why if you're not already in chiller academy i'd really encourage you to go check it out just think about it right uh, this is what i do full time i i've i've committed I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's where I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can. Uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 